Hello everyone, it's me, Tim Rogers. I'm live here, well, pre-recorded, from Electronic 3 2018 with Kotaku.com. We're here at the Scuff Gaming booth. Now, Scuff is a company I love. They started out modifying controllers, and now they're here making their own controllers completely from scratch, and it's a beautiful thing. As you may know, if you've seen any of my videos, you've heard me scream about the Xbox One Elite controller, and Scuff are the guys, they were brought in to really make all of that stuff work on that controller. Their analog sticks and their, their paddle buttons. They invented the idea of a paddle on the back of the controller. So this is the new Scuff Vantage, which is an elite controller for the PlayStation 4. There have been a couple of more expensive controller choices for the PlayStation 4 that are, have been officially licensed by Sony. However, this one is truly made with all that Xbox One Elite controller pedigree. It's got all that power to it. It's got these nice rubber grips back here, and it's got all the density and hardness that you would expect from something like an Xbox One Elite controller. It's got this D-pad. This D-pad is very stiff. When you push it, you feel like you've been someplace. There's, you're not gonna accidentally press this D-pad. This D-pad feels very good. It's not like super hard. You're not gonna strain your muscles pressing it. It's just, it really, really feels exact and mechanical. And there's a tactile click every time you press it. And these are, shoulder buttons are also mechanical too. So on the PlayStation 4 official controller, I feel like these buttons are very mushy and they kind of rock back and forth under your finger, and they just feel very low quality. However, these buttons feel extremely rigid and solid and good. I don't even need to play a game with this. I'm playing the game in my head. I'm feeling the game with my fingers. And these sax buttons, which you press with this meaty part of your finger right here, those are very good. These, again, I don't feel like I'm gonna press these accidentally. I feel like I'm gonna cradle my finger around the controller, and I can press this button like this, and I can press this button like this, and it's not gonna be accidental, and I can press them at the same time, let's see. The paddles on the back. Now, a lot of people have criticized the Xbox One Elite controller paddles. Too easy to press accidentally. They're very light, they're very hair-triggery. These have quite a bit of pull to them, and you can actually hear this mechanical click. I'm gonna let you hear this. You hear that? The central paddles are a little bit actually harder to press, which I like. You can hear that deeper click. I love that. Now, when you plug in your chat headset, you have this little bar down here, this touch bar that lets you change the volume of your headset chat. So you can actually turn your, your buddies down a little bit while you're playing the game or crank them up. I think that's a nice feature to have down here. The trackpad up here is uh, much more rigid and it feels a lot more solid than it does on Sony's controller. I like the deep USB jack. It's very deeply set into the controller. It feels like it's not gonna come unplugged easily. You'll notice on the bottom there's a switch to change it between wireless mode and wired mode, which I like. I'm gonna play wired most of the time because I need that extra insurance to know that when I make a mistake and die in a game, it was definitely my fault and not the controller's fault. Now this actually really impresses me a lot. You can take this faceplate off of the controller. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Let's try to get this. Look at that, it's doable even with one hand. I've removed the faceplate. Now once you remove the faceplate, you can swap out these components. So you can take the D-pad off, much like the Xbox One Elite controller, and you can replace it with a different D-pad. You can take these analog sticks off. Now I was, I was coached in this by official representatives of Scuff Gaming. They, they, they taught me how to, how to really get this off, and they said that a lot of people are gonna be afraid that they're gonna break it. It's not as easy to take the analog sticks off as it is with the Xbox One Elite controller. You have to really yank, and we're gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Oh, I stood my microphone up on the table. So we're gonna go ahead and you really gotta yank this. So hold on. There you go, you gotta yank it really hard to get it off. But I've gotten it off. And once it's off, you can swap the analog stick out. And Scuff has many different analog sticks that I can use. Putting it back on is a little bit tricky. You have to point the logo, the Scuff logo, much as it will appear on the box. With this little arrow pointing down to the left. You have to line that up appropriately well. I've done it. I put it back on there. It fits in there nice and snug. While it's not quite as easy to mess with as the Xbox One Elite controller, you feel like it's more secure when it's in there. Another thing that's really neat, once again, take that faceplate off, is you have the rumble motors actually come right out. You can take these out, and that actually reduces the weight of the controller significantly. With the rumble motors, it's heavier than the PlayStation 4 controller, uh, and without the motors, it's lighter. I find that really, really, really interesting. So if you want the PlayStation 4 controller to be lighter or heavier, get one of these. Let me put this back on here. Let's get that back on there. One of my favorite features of the Xbox One Elite controller is the hair triggers, and the Scuff Gaming controller has those as well. So you'll notice you can, you rotate these little switches 
And again, it's not it's not as smooth as a little Xbox One switch that goes in the back. You actually have to kind of mess with it a little bit, but you feel you feel like a more of like a mechanical genius when you do this. Hair triggers with a much, much shorter pull. I like that for all my shooting games. I don't need that analog effect. Also, these triggers come off. You feel like you're just breaking the controller by ripping this off, but it's meant to happen, so you can change out the triggers. We have all these accessories, right? You have different analog sticks. You have short analog sticks, tall analog sticks, convex, concave, all the different types of analog sticks. And then they've got these face plates, and I'm told you can buy an accessory kit that comes with multiple face plates. Look at all these colors. These colors are so good. You've got this orange, pink, yellow. I think I might go for the yellow one. I might want to start with yellow. But then you've got these camo blends. All these are just, they just look fantastic. And I love these long triggers. Kind I don't want to play with long triggers set on hair triggers, see what that's like. It comes in this beautiful box. It's like, that was one of the things that felt really magical when I bought my Xbox One Elite controllers, opening up that clamshell box, which has that ribbon connecting the two beautiful pieces of cardboard, and the controller is just sitting on a little nest in there. I'm told if you buy the wired wireless one, it comes with a carrying case as well. Military grade tactical like gun case. Just feels really robust and good. I want one of these controllers. I will pay $200 for this controller, the wired wireless version, because I need one. There's just no other controller that's really that good on the PlayStation 4. And this is finally a controller that I think, and I'm telling you, I think it's better than the Xbox One Elite controller. No joke, this was the one thing I was most excited about at E3. What does that mean? Have I, how, have I grown up to a point where I come to E3 not to play video games, because I'm going to play a lot of these games. I'm going to play Hitman 2. I don't need to play it here. I'm going to play it at home the day it comes out. All I really want, what matters most to me now, is the feeling of this high-quality controller in my hand. Video games are bigger, better, fancier, more beautiful, and more mainstream than ever. And I think if you're spending so much money on games, it's worth it to have a good controller. I often called the Xbox One Elite controller the Mercedes-Benz of video game controllers. I think this thing might be the Porsche 911. Speaking of which, there's something that, that interests me. Uh, Scuff actually makes a Porsche controller Xbox One Elite for Forza. The real leather handles, you feel that? This guy over here knows about the leather. This is one we did, um, so we call it Scuff, uh, Scuff Forza Elite controller. And what we did is we worked with Porsche and Turn 10 Studios. We created something that's very customized. We've got the Porsche logo, obviously all the scuff features, but we got real Alcantara leather handle here. So it was a limited edition we did, and we did one in gray and another in India red. And uh, India red's just for the Porsche dealerships. And then, um, and then we got the Alcantara leather for the other. So it's kind of cool, yeah. Bit of fun. It's a beautiful controller. How you doing, Timmy? All right. <laughs> I'm doing okay. We've got the Scuff Vantage controller. Give us your sales pitch. If you just look generally at the controller, everyone who knows about Scuff knows we invented paddles about eight years ago. We did hair triggers, trigger stops, removable parts. That's something that we've kind of created over the last eight years. But what we wanted to do with the Vantage is we wanted to create a controller built from the ground up that has all the functionality we previously had, but allows to cater for the next generation of games that's coming through. Things like Battle Royale mode. You see, obviously, Fortnite, PUBG, Black Ops 4. All these things are going to go into what we call a much more extended hand experience. So we want to bridge that gap between a keyboard and mouse and a controller. And the only way we can do that is by using more of the hand. Let's say, for example, you were playing Fortnite with this controller. How would you program this controller to play Fortnite? Can you tell us what that experience would be like? Yeah, well, I've been testing this controller for probably five months now. Um, and I've been playing Fortnite with it as one of the games. I uh, personally, what I use is I'll use my X as my left paddle, that's jump. I use O to build, right paddle. I'll use my map as this paddle instead of moving over to trackpad. Um, I'll use the square button to be my right sax button, so that's picking up objects. I'll use triangle to be my left sax button, so that's obviously switching between pickaxe and moving to weapons. And then I don't actually use this one, but if I was to use it, I'd probably use it to drop or something on the D-pad. Um, so that, what that does is it allows you to keep your thumbs on the thumbsticks, it allows you to pick up objects really quickly, it allows you to switch between weapons, it allows you to jump, build, and do everything else, and view your map without moving your hands off the thumbstick. So these additional two buttons on the side for Battle Royale mode games, it really does make a difference. I'm actually quite excited to see if we can, uh, if we can get somebody with a controller to beat someone with a keyboard and mouse eventually. Maybe not tomorrow, but hopefully in the future. That's my, that's my objective. The knee-jerk answer is always, oh, mouse and keyboard is better. It's more competitive. And it's statistics and history have 
I guess, proven that? It doesn't need to be fundamentally true. I think you could make a controller that can beat a mouse and keyboard, and you believe that. I do, and uh, I guess our, our mission since we started the company has been to extend hand use. We started with the paddles, so they were redundant, these fingers on the back, until we invented paddles. So if you think about that, there's an education that we've done over the last eight years, which is why 90% of the pros use scuff features. It does allow you to use more of your hand, and that gives you an advantage. So as we've extended and educated, people get it. Now they, all the developers, they're creating games that are more complex, have more functions. So the need to use more of your hand becomes more prevalent as that evolution happens. So what we've tried to do is we've tried to extend in an, in an ergonomic, natural way, how can we actually keep up with that evolution of the, of the developers and improve that hand use. So I do believe that as we evolve the scuff, then this absolutely can compete with something that's keyboard mouse experience if you look at just pure hand use. Now obviously macro functions and all those things you don't do on controllers because it's illegal. The pros definitely all understand what's up with this. A more casual person will say a $200 controller. What's the deal with that? Now me, I personally love this. What's your message for people who are just more casual? Because obviously you want them to use the controller too. Why should they buy this? Yeah, so obviously it's more expensive than a traditional controller. Um, but if you look at what you're doing, this is the only tactile interface between you and the game. So it is the most important piece of equipment between you and the game. And if you compare it to a headset, people will drop two, three hundred dollars on a good headset. And that's just a dumb audio device, no disrespect to the headset, but it's, it's a dumb audio device. This is actually your only interface to actually prove your skill in game. If you do a price comparison to a headset and you actually look at the functional enhancement this makes and the amount of time you spend, then yeah, it's an expensive tool but it's something that I think people can justify if, uh, if they really break it down for the hours they play. Obviously I like design, I like um, shapes and things, and just if you look at the design aspects around the controller here, Very we nice. kind of look at a sports car and look at the hips of a really nice sports car, and then you look at the angles that come off here, it kind of shines off, and even down to the detail that we put along here. Whilst that looks what, nice, what, yeah. so that's, that's a texture there, yeah. and the purpose of that texture isn't just from a design aspect, that is actually, so it's got a slight texture to it, so when you hold the controller there, you want maximum control because your fingers are actually lifted off the paddles. So you're only really controlling the controller or holding the controller with two hands. So as you wrap your hands round, that stops any slippage and it also allows you to access the sax button really nicely. Yeah. So as you flip between here, you've got maximum control. And those little things, whilst they look nice, they do have a functional advantage. So we tried to focus on functionality. I love it, that's not a question. I, mean, I love it as well, so. You can tell so much thought, work, enterprise, design, so much has gone into these controllers. And you've been doing this for eight years, and you're gonna keep doing it. And you keep doing it, yeah, we're there. We wanna take this thing to a whole new level. And uh, as I say, that tactile interface between you and the game is the most critical part of your experience. So we wanna make sure we, we do the best we can to, to improve that. Yeah. I made, I developed a competitive video game. Obviously, it did not become the biggest game in the world because now I have a job making videos about video games. However, I tested compatibility and the experience from 188 different controllers. So I'm at a point now where I know a little bit more about controllers than probably most people who play video games. All I need to do is touch a controller and you touch the D-pad, touch the analog stick for a couple seconds to know how good it is, to just imagine any game with it. And I'm telling you, right here, live on tape. I think this is my favorite controller I've ever held in my life. Fantastic, yeah, no, I'm delighted to hear that. And, uh, and honestly, it's taken eight, eight years to get to this point and we've sold you know, many hundreds, thousands of controllers and we got a lot of feedback from the best gamers in the world through to the average Joe gamers. And so we announced it 22nd of May, launching and shipping it in August. Yeah. And I will have one. You definitely will. Kotaku.com. Please don't stop watching or I will die. However, I will not die hungry. Video Games Forever, Kotaku.com, Electronic 3, 2018.